Jane, a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. I was over at Slack. Yes. And I was with Bert Richter, a Nobel mm -hmm. Prize winner, and a man who mm -hmm. had run Slack for several years. And we were chatting, mm -hmm. and he brought to my attention that you chaired mm -hmm. an important study that was given to the governor mm -hmm. to help the governor and the various departments in the state plan their energy strategy as well as their strategy for reducing carbon emissions. And he said to me, nobody seems to remember that study. Now, you <laughs> were the architect mm. of that study. What do you say about his statement that hardly anyone remembers that study? It's been five years now. You released it in June of 2011. What do you say about that? Well, I, I think people do remember the study I, um, and I are still listening to it. And I'm still asked uh, to come and talk about it all over the, all over the country. Um, in December, I was at Harvard at the uh, JFK School talking about the study. And it was just as relevant to them uh, today as it was to us when we wrote it. Uh, in terms of influence on policy in California, I think um, we could have, I, I wish we had had a bit more uh, influence but perhaps because the study was a very technical study and we didn't make policy recommendations based on that study, um, that, that would have been the next step would be to try to understand what it implies about policy and be specific about it. And that, that might have helped us. Would I be correct? The study came about in part because in 2005, Arnold Schwarzenegger signed a bill mm -hmm. called Assembly Bill AB 32. Well, it's not AB 32, but yes, he signed an executive order. And that executive order put California on a pathway right. to not only be able to provide the state the energy it new needs, but also to be a leader in reducing carbon emissions, Correct. greenhouse gas emissions. Is that right? Correct. I mean, his executive order uh, was the first of its kind saying California would reduce emissions of greenhouse gases, not produce so much renewable energy or not produce this many batteries, but reduce emissions by 80% below 1990 levels, and we would do that by 2050. It was a very far-sighted executive order, which Governor Brown uh, left in place when he came in. And Governor B Brown has begun to look now at what are the interim steps to get to that goal. And you would agree that the Brown administration have put in place several strategies for being able to meet those goals. Is that correct? I think the strategies that the Brown administration has put in place are working towards those goals. Um, I, I don't know that they're going to be sufficient to reach those goals. They're very aggressive, very, very aggressive goals. When I took a look at the summary of the study, mm -hmm. If I remember correctly, I saw four different strategies. Could you? Yes. So there, we, we spent uh, about two years doing this study. And I have to say, the first year was really about developing what we thought were the, the important key strategies. And the first strategy was to uh, reduce the demand for energy through efficiency measures. And everybody kind of feels that that's an important uh, step. Um, the second measure was to completely uh, decarbonize electricity. De the taking carbon out of electricity production is a very key strategy. Could you give us one example of that? So for example, uh, if you produce energy the way we largely produce it today, using a lot of fossil fuel to, to uh, burn and produce electricity in a thermal power, what we call thermal power plant, that produces carbon dioxide. There are a number of ways we could produce electricity without doing that. Um, but uh, I don't want to oversimplify it. It's actually a complicated problem because it's not just producing the electrons, but producing them when we need them. But we can use renewable energy to do that. We can use nuclear power to do that. And if we want to use fossil fuel, we can take that fossil fuel, the emissions from that, and, and sequester them, put them underground. So that's the second. And probably the single most important strategy is decarbonizing electricity. Then if we've managed to decarbonize electricity, 
then we can take a lot of the things we usually do with fuel, like burn fuel in our cars or burn fuel to make heat, and we can electrify them instead because then the electricity isn't producing emissions. If you go down the street and you see an electric bus and it says it produces no emissions, that's not really true if the electricity it's using came from a thermal power plant that's producing emissions. So we have to couple those things. Yeah. And the last thing is that we still need some fuel because there's some things that just can't be electrified easily. And then we have to find ways to, to have fuel that doesn't emit carbon dioxide. And that is the hardest technical problem. So electrification, mm -hmm. isn't that like creating a electric car? Yes, creating electric car, yeah. bus, trains, heat, uh, using electric stoves or electric dryers instead of gas dryers or gas stoves. Um, there's, you know, basically it's uh, uh, the, the most important area is electrification of transportation. That will be the biggest that will hit. will be the biggest. And the biggest hit, yeah. Okay, I want to paraphrase, and I'm probably not going to get this uh, correct. One of the strategies is renewable energy. Right. Another one is energy efficiency. Right. Another one is um, electrification. Mm -hmm. And what's the fourth? Is, is we, use, we have to use fuel for certain things. You can't electrify them. So there's airplanes. Can't really oh, run sure. on electricity, right? And for a good example, another one might be very high quality heat that you need in an industrial process. You need a very high heat, can't achieve with an electrical resistance. Those needs, those are uh, somewhat irreducible you know, some of them may eventually be reduced, but right now they're irreducible. You still need that fuel. And if we keep burning oil and gas, then we, if for, for those fuel uses, then we're going to still have uh, emissions. But if we, for example, just to give an, uh, an example that isn't usually used, but is a good one, if we sucked carbon dioxide out of the air, took it away from the atmosphere, and put it in an oil reservoir, and produced oil in that reservoir, when we burn that oil, it would be carbon neutral if we put enough carbon dioxide in there. So that would be a fuel that doesn't contribute to greenhouse gases. Okay. So when your study came out five years ago, mm -hmm. how was it received? I think it was very well received. Everyone seemed very interested in it. And I think it, it did highlight for the state, for example, the need for carbon capture and storage. I think the state is moving slowly in the direction of trying to accommodate that technology. Yeah. I'll come back to that point, but when I first looked at this report that Richter asked mm -hmm. me to look at, um, I, not specialized in this area, mm -hmm. envisioned the state had a strategy and was mm -hmm. moving forward. And, and then along comes your study, mm -hmm. and it's in a way at first difficult to appreciate what your study does when one does not have a clear understanding of the state's mm -hmm. strategy. Would you agree? Uh, I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. All right. Well, Schwarzenegger mm -hmm. gave some goals, some mm -hmm. objectives, mm -hmm. and folks in Sacramento worked at putting together plans and strategies mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. attain those goals, right? Mm -hmm. And I think for most people, it's not clear in our heads what strategies they put in place, okay? Maybe yeah. to you. And then you come along with your study, mm -hmm. right? What is the number one or number two contributions your study made to that? Does it include this? Your study provided deep, deep thinking mm -hmm. to help the people in Sacramento think more clearly about it, or did you come up with any new strategies? And I think you did. I, I heard a little bit of the carbon capture a few mm -hmm. minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Have I articulated a question enough for you? Well, I, I, I mean, I think that there, the state was very involved in developing strategies for AB 32, remember, which is a 2020, uh, a, a 2020 goal of, mm. of going back to 1990 emissions by 2020. And so there were a whole raft of regulations that were developed and, uh, to, to, to try to do that. There were limits on long-term power purchases in electricity so that you were only allowed to, to buy, make a long-term power purchase agreement if that power had, was below a certain emission rate. 
Um, and there, were, there was a cap and trade program that was instituted. There was a low carbon fuel standard that was instituted. So all of these things were really aimed at 2030. I think what the governor's done now, and this, especially in his speech last year, is try to understand whether or not we're headed to the 2050 goal. And in fact, we're not right now. Um, you know, I think the state has, uh, I've looked at the at data, I, and there are some people in the California Air Resources Board who manages manage this for the state uh, who disagree with the data that I've seen, so I, I can't be absolutely sure my data is correct. But the data I've seen is that we added something like 17 uh, gigawatts of solar power in the last 10 or 12 years, which is a huge amount, um, and by itself doesn't contribute emissions. But at the same time, we've added 30,000 gigawatts, uh, 30 gigawatts, sorry, 30,000 megawatts of gas-fired generation. And we've lost the nuclear power plant, the, the Songs plant in LA, which lost 2,000 uh, megawatts of carbon-free energy. And we had a terrible drought, which took uh, about a third of our hydropower away, which was also carbon-free. So if you look at the emissions track record of the state, it dips dramatically during the recession because we cut back on energy sure. use. But it's all the way just, just about back to where it was before the emissions so, recession. So we're really in a situation where um, the, the, we're not tracking a path that will get us to 80% below. And that's making the bend in that curve hasn't happened yet. And in order to do that, we're going to have to have some big uh, tools, big tools like nuclear power, big tools like carbon capture and storage, really looking at uh, land use planning and eliminating as much as we can uh, the use of fuel through uh, change in uh, transportation methods. Those are the big things that we have to do. Okay, so you made a, a point. Sacramento has its strategies, and, right. and I admire those right. folks. Hard-fought strategies. You can't uh, oh, forget yes. that. But as of right now, as a result of, of various things, the drought mm -hmm. and the shutting down of the San mm -hmm. uh, Diego power plants. By the San way, Enofri, I think I, mm -hmm. I saw a paper that said the shutting down of that nuclear plant mm -hmm. in terms of emissions wiped out all gains from windmills, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. not windmills. Wind turbines, uh, yeah. I have Windmill. I, uh, windmills, I say it too, but it's wind turbines. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And wiped out all the uh, progress in that mm -hmm. particular area. And, and then I think we're on schedule in a decade or so to shut the Diablo Canyon mm -hmm. plant down, which is a, again going to have to be replaced by, you know, it's going to a allow more greenhouse gases mm -hmm. to just flourish. So, mm -hmm. but the bottom line is the state as things are going, cannot attain its 2050 goal. You can't, uh, you can't, uh, let's talk, just talk about electricity for a while because I think that's really critical. Um, you know, I, I just want to make a point. You can make things very efficient and therefore have less demand for energy. That makes the problem smaller, but it doesn't make the problem go away. If all the energy you use doesn't produce emissions, that makes the problem go away. So although efficiency is very important, you really need to concentrate on the sources of energy, and electricity is the biggest. So, so the thing about electricity is the state has moved towards trying to reduce the emissions from electricity through a renewable port, what's called a renewable portfolio standard. They're demanding that 50% of the energy we use come from renewable energy, which is solar and wind and waves and things like that. If you Ask them what the other 50% is. They don't know. They don't know at this time. They and don't. that's the next step. Okay. Now, I read something I heard you say on a previous occasion mm -hmm. that there's not enough focus on the emissions. Mm -hmm. there's, right. There's discussions about increased efficiency, more mileage per gallon, right. and, right. and whatever, but it's the emissions. And I immediately said to myself, you're using the principle of concentration on what matters most, and it's <laughs> the emissions. So mm -hmm. you're sort of advising people in your report, and here, think about the emissions, and right. you'll start to see what the problem really is and look differently right. at the solution. Now, 
You want to produce another report? <laughs> I think there are several really important reports that need to get written uh, for the state of California. One is a report that would look at various ideas for completely decarbonizing electricity and looking at what the practical problems are, the engineering problems from a perspective of a utility that has to deliver electricity. When you turn the light switch on, that electricity is there to, to, for you. From the perspective of, uh, of making sure that energy is there when you need it, electricity is there when you need it, we need to look at a bunch of different ideas for decarbonizing the whole electricity system and compare them against the practical requirements for transmission, for uh, we have we have other issues in electricity which are very complicated and hard for people to understand. You know, we just talk about megawatts, but electricity oscillates, it goes up and down and up and down, right, very fast. And when you put a lot of different kinds of services into play, they can cancel each other oh, unless yes. you get it all lined oh, up. Yes. So the the way in which you do frequency control, the way in which you take account for the fact that some seasons the wind doesn't blow very much, or during the night the the sun doesn't shine, all of those issues have to be built into a new system, and we need to think very carefully about how that system's going to work. And we're not. I don't think we're close to doing that yet. Yeah, you know, I hear people talk about smart grids, and half the yes. time I hear them talking about the line that goes to a meter in your house and right. others seem to be talking about uh, the impact of storms and the smart grid is going to help us uh, modulate the mm -hmm. system and, and yes some are talking about a myriad of new types of energy sources that are coming in mm -hmm. and yes can waves cancel out each other mm -hmm. it's incredibly complex mm -hmm. um, now I also came from you uh, an idea that uh, made me think about the way the state, and I'm, I'm saying this so you can correct me, the way the state seems to be approaching the energy requirements and the carbon emissions is to try to burn as little fuel as possible and that has the least amount of emitting of carbon emissions and to do other things, etc. Mm -hmm. But it's to burn it and let it go up. Mm -hmm. But did I get out of your study the notion that maybe, yes, we burn it, but we don't let it go up? Yeah, that's one idea. I mean, if, if in fact you do end up burning it, then you can, do, you can do two things. One is you can take the carbon, take the carbon out of the fuel before you burn it. The great example of that is hydrogen fuel. Everybody's heard we're going to do hydrogen. Well, you got to get the hydrogen from someplace. And where we usually get it, there's, there's some places where you can actually pump hydrogen out of the ground, but they're very rare. So you got to get the hydrogen from someplace. And there's really only two ways. One way is to break down methane. Yes. And the other way is to break down water. The way of, way of getting it from breaking down water is very energy intensive. The way of getting it from methane is very easy, but if you get it out of methane, it produces carbon dioxide as a byproduct. Yes. So you can break down methane, put the carbon dioxide under the ground, and then burn the hydrogen. This is a really good technology for what we call firming renewable energy or intermittent energy because you know, when the sun is shining, you get your solar energy just fine. When it's not, you still want some solar, you still want some electricity, so you break down the methane, have the hydrogen burn it to make electricity and put the CO2 underground. And methane is on the growth area right now with yeah, the oceans methane's... warming, et cetera. Right. And, okay. Well, methane's very inexpensive because of the fracking re revolution. So uh, the That's other way true. to do it is to burn the methane to make electricity and take the carbon dioxide out of the flue out of the, where the, you've burned it. So it goes up the chimney. You take it out of the flue and you take that carbon dioxide, purify it and put it underground. Either way works. Okay, you've thrown out a lot. I was going to just stick to the process of uh, when an electric plant burns the mm -hmm. fuel, mm -hmm. we uh, capture right. the gases right. and put them underground. Mm -hmm. But I notice organizations like the Sierra Club don't seem to want to have anything to do with that. Am I wrong? Well, there's a disconnect in, um, in the climate problem between what people 
who are advocating for a solution for and what's actually a solution. Um, and part of that has to do with what they think will get people on board and get people moving as a social movement versus what is actually a technical solution. And because the technical solutions are actually way more complicated, it's really hard to make that the nugget of a social movement. And so you'll see people advocating things that, um, from a technical perspective, kind of make my flesh crawl because I sure. say that if you get what you want, it's not going to solve the problem. Yeah. So why are you advocating for that? But I do recognize we have a lot of people who don't believe this is really a problem. And people who are out there trying to move a social, trying to change the social movement have a place. Yeah, it's hard for the, those in the social movement to get the knowledge, the education. Right. And they may never be able to do it because of their background. And, and so it's very hard, as you're, I think, pointing out, for mm -hmm. them to right. realize technically it's not possible. And I think that that group also has the same problem with nuclear. Yes. And uh, you do not believe that this state in the next two or three decades is going to start putting in nuclear power plants. I hope they do. I yeah. think it would be a great thing if we did. Um, I think this country should be leading the way with nuclear power. It, it makes me uncomfortable that China's leading the way in yeah. nuclear power. I think we should be doing it. Yes. But that's kind of a fact of life. And I think what's happening uh, in China is admirable that, that some of these new re reactor designs are going to be tried and tested. And maybe they'll come back here. Um, I do think the United States leads in the regulatory environment for nuclear power. And I think we should be very much collaborating uh, where we can to, to advance this. And we need, we need these big sources of energy. Yeah. So the additional solutions you would mm -hmm. like to see incorporated in this state and beyond. Let's mm -hmm. see if I'm correct. Uh, the carbon capture yes. as, as well as the methane mm -hmm. separated mm -hmm. to be able to take advantage of methane. Mm -hmm. that, would be, that would be one, right? Mm -hmm. And the other one, what are you smiling about? Well, I'm smiling because um, uh, I often think to myself that if you're anti-fracking, you're pro-coal, and you're also uh, you're not you're not understanding the role that methane could play in uh, in really understanding the climate problem. Um, but you know, I think that basically methane has a tremendous role right now in general in moving coal out of the market. Remember, coal is the worst of the fossil fuels, and methane has half the carbon emissions per unit of energy that coal does. So it's really important stepwise to, to take advantage of this methane boom and sure. use it. Now, you know, there, there are issues. And, and the other approach is nuclear. Yes. Those are the two. Now, you want to produce another study. How do you go about doing it? And we don't have much time left. Okay. What, what approach do you go to? To get a study going? Well, um, in the last study that we did, the California Energy Future study that you are referring to, um, we had a bunch of committed people from all over the state who really just put their sweat equity into it. That, that whole report, and I think there's maybe a dozen reports, separate reports plus a summary report, was done for something like $175,000. Um, really nothing. Um, what we really need to do is to get the state to, to take seriously some of these issues. Like, for example, how do we decarbonize electricity entirely? How are we going to do that? What are the strategies? They, need to, they would need to fund a study. Um, and we at the California Council on Science and Technology can pull together a body of experts uh, to do that. Um, and as well, I think they need another study is where are we going to go with fuel? Where are we going to go with fuel? What yeah. do you mean by that? Well, I think that the, uh, the focus has been on biofuel. And what our study showed is it was very unlikely that biofuel would be sufficient and, and also would not actually lower the carbon content or the carbon emissions associated with fuel that much. So we think that we have to go farther. OK. And by the way, before this interview, I spoke to somebody from the Com Energy Commission, uh -huh. former uh -huh. uh, Jeff Byron. Oh, you did? He was in office when your study came out. Right. He says to say hello, and he said, your study has been invaluable. Oh, that's this. good to So I just want to mention my next guest is going to be Jim Sweeney. OK. I'm going to produce a show with him in a few weeks. I'll and, watch it. <laughs> uh, Jane Long, you've been wonderful. I want to thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me.